you cut an item too big. What do you do? Oftentimes in social media, you'll always see the highs, but you don't really see too many of the lows. In today's episode, we're gonna discuss a feature that was cut too big and how the approach was to salvage or save the parts um, and the method I took to get there. Hey folks, welcome back to American Made by Practical Machinists. My name is Justin Webb from Zealous Manufacturing. Today's episode, we are going to go over a boo-boo. So there's always the uh, obvious method of remake it, uh, or B, you know, depending on your material, you can weld up, recut, or you can sleeve it. Those are kind of typically the three. Um, I know a lot of people are gonna say remake it. Uh, there's about, oof, let's say 50-ish hours into machining these. So I tried to save myself a headache. Here's the item. This item is flat here and here. On the surface, it's got some contours. So you have to cut soft jaws. So the way I did these out of a billet was I did this side first, did all this machining, flipped it, and then I could just hold this on parallels. I didn't have to worry about these contours that you can see there. And why I did it that way was to avoid soft jaws and then any variability in that aspect. But one thing that I did do, and I shouldn't have done, is I should have made this a three-op part. I did it in two operations. So again, I did all this. I flipped it. I did all of this. To locate, instead of putting a probe all the way down in this hole, the way I did this was I took this hole, I did this geometry, and then I just put, I drilled the hole all the way through. So then when I flipped it, I could pick up off that hole, you know, X, sorry, I'm working backwards, X, Y, you know, and Z, and I could pick up off that hole. That was great. The only problem is this feature, while it's round and it's got two flats, it's supposed to hold this disconnect switch, and it's supposed to prevent that switch from turning. So as you can see, that item turns, that's no good. Boo boo. So, what we did, and the reason why I tried to do this in two ops, and now when I redo these, the next time I'm gonna do them in three ops. So I'm gonna do this feature, but I'm not gonna do it to size. Then I'm going to do all the inside, and then I'm gonna flip it again one more time, and I'm gonna do this feature, and then I'm gonna make sure that it holds and it doesn't rotate. So how are we gonna fix this? Luckily, this is aluminum nice material to work with and this customer is very open to saving the product he doesn't want me to have to remake it all he, um, so lesson number one always talk to your customer immediately doesn't matter what the issue is always say hey you know i screwed up you know this is what i'm thinking is this acceptable is it not and let the customer dictate so the customer said we don't need to remake them we just need to figure out a way that makes sense that isn't ugly um, that doesn't, you know, not, not a lot of putzing. So I thought, well, maybe I can just weld here and recut this feature. Well, then I was worried, you know, what if what if that weld doesn't have good penetration and it falls out while I'm remachining? So what we did was we did a sleeve. This is the sleeved item. Don't know if you can see that well. We'll do a close up in a second. So what we did was we machined an item. It's a two operation product. So we machined a blank. Uh, then we flipped it into the round surface that fits in here. So we actually took all of these and we remachined them. We added two tapped holes so that we could an avoid any rotation and to hold it in. Then what we did was we actually shrink fit these. So the sleeve gets thrown in the freezer, shrinks up, and we press them in to this piece and then we bolt them in. Then we kind of let everything grow together so that it's all one piece. So here, right, I can't rotate it. I'm trying to rotate it. Because this is an electrical disconnect, right, there's a lot of torque when you disconnect that. So there's that. So you can see it did work, my sleeve. So I'm gonna show you guys now how we went about that process of the sleeve. So here is that item uh, sleeved. So you guys can kind of see, right, there's the sleeve, there's the cut to prevent that rotation and then a little bit of corner relief to help it uh, go in easily. So 
here we did these all, and I'll show you guys the modification, how we approach this in a second. So here it is. That is the finished item before the disconnect and the terminals go in. So here's the item. Ironically, I had to cut soft jaws to redo all the work. So the joke is I should have just done it in three operations instead of two. Well, lesson learned. Now I get to play with all the fun stuff. So what we're gonna do here, you can see there's a flat that's supposed to prevent the rotation. Now what I'm actually gonna have to do is I go in and I recut the bore, drill and tap those two holes, and then chamfer the edge so that the sleeve can get pressed in. Here's op one. So this is the outside of the sleeve that goes on the bottom. So we, uh, I don't have a countersink that small. I don't countersink a lot actually that small. So uh, I actually had to do those with a ball end mill. Um, so here's op one. We'll flip it, we'll put it in soft jaws and I'll show you how I hold it in op two because some people looked at it and thought it was a little goofy. Um, but I'll explain why I did it that way. So here's the item and here's the soft jaws. So a lot of people thought or some of the people that saw this said, why don't you just put them like this? Well, I was a little worried if my soft jaws were a little too loose, I'd have rock. So because I was only able to engage about here and here, and this is round and then it kind of tapers there. So I had a very little engagement on that taper. So I decided to angle it. So you can see I'm getting more contact here. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then I also know this orientation is pretty solid. And then obviously I got the parallel slot for the jaws so we can realign it. So we can realign it if we need to, but yeah. So the item sits kind of like that. I'll crank it down and show you guys. So here you can see items in there probed off that hole and off the base bottom machine surface on the fixed jaw. So not that hole, sorry, that hole. Um, so now we'll rough everything out. We'll finish the, we won't finish the bore. We'll leave stock to the bore and then I take one of the items and I see to make sure how it's a snug fit. And then hopefully um, once I get it just where it starts to push in, uh, but it kind of locks up, I'll take it out and then I freeze these and then we press them into the item. So again, folks, thanks for tuning in. That's the way I chose to sleeve these items and try to save them. Uh, so far, everything works out well. We ran all of the pieces, everything seems good. That disconnects really nice and tight. I would like to hear from you guys to see what would have been your approach. Would you have chose welding, remaking, or sleeving like I did? And I, if you chose, or if you would have done the sleeve method, I wanna know how you would have chosen to tackle that. Um, some people would have probably just done op one, op two, and then finish that item, make sure the disconnect fits in and then pushed it in uh, and bolted it in, sorry, not pushed it in. Uh, but I was a little curious and concerned uh, if once I put it into the item, if the compression would cause that feature to collapse a little bit because it's pretty thin wall. So just curious how you guys would have approached that and tackled that. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. Any questions or if you want me to dive into any specific item or any specific approach on this project, drop a comment below. I'll be sure to check those and respond. And as always, like, subscribe to Practical Machinist for all of our tips and tricks.